for joining us. My name is Lucy Sacco, and this is Master Artist Class, a program designed to introduce master artists from the late 19th and early 20th centuries by offering a brief lecture on the artist's life and his painting style, a segment with images of the artist's master works, and lastly, we will paint our own rendition of one of the artist's paintings. In today's episode, we will continue our studies of the father of Impressionism, Claude Monet, by reflecting on his childhood and formative years as a young adult. Claude Monet was born in Paris, France in 1840, at a time and in an environment he described as entirely concerned with commerce and where everyone professed a contemptuous disdain for art. At the age of five, Monet's family moved to La Ove, Normandy, by the sea. It was here that he found his love of nature and desire to express his artistic talent. Monet was never one for structured education, but was more inclined to learn outside of the constructs of formal education. Even still, he did manage to have an ability to write well and to work with numbers. As a teenager, he drew caricatures and sold them to the locals in La Ove for a small allowance. In his later teens, the young Monet became acquainted with Eugene Bodin, a local landscape artist that persuaded him to join an open air painting club. Monet exclaimed, suddenly a veil was torn away. My destiny as a painter opened to me. Despite his father's reluctance, he was eventually allowed to study in Paris. In 1861, he was enlisted in the army and stationed in Algeria. It wasn't long before he was released due to illness and encouraged to resume his studies by an aunt. In 1862, he was back in Paris, determined to make his mark as an independent artist. During his studies, he was accompanied by other artists that were studying the Renaissance masters at the Louvre. Monet frequently found himself painting the landscape by looking out of the windows. He was always more interested in painting what was outdoors, but it was here he met his colleagues Frederick Basile, Alfred Sisley, and Pierre Auguste Renoir. Today we will be painting La Allée Port at low tide, one of many of Monet's en plein air seascape paintings. Before we begin our painting, Please view the upcoming segment filled with images of some of Monet's coastal en plein air works painted along the coast where Monet was raised. Each scene is different with different textures, moods, and lighting. Pay close attention to the variety of colors Monet infused into his work. Enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. 
today, La Alley Port at low tide, you will need these supplies. A one three quarter inch flat head brush, one quarter inch tapered acrylic brush, one one quarter inch acrylic flathead brush, a palette knife, blue tape that doesn't stick to your copy, but it sticks well enough to hold it in place, absorbent paper towels. This is a really important part of your project. You'll need gold acrylic paint, hooker green, medium cadmium red, cobalt blue, light violet, Alizarin Crimson, Unbleached Titanium, Light Blue Violet, and Titanium White. Today I'd like to show you how to mix some of the colors that we have to, that we'll need in this painting. So we're going to start with the clouds. Some of these clouds are a little bit dark blue, but they're not quite light blue violet, and they're not quite cobalt. So um, I'm going to take a little bit. I'll take one of these. Oh, you're going to need palette. You're going to need a, a disposable palette or a reusable palette. So today I'm going to quickly just show you how to mix some of these colors for your own benefit. Um, now, I'm not really sure how I'm going to do this, but I'm going to show you anyway. So the first color is the clouds. And I use the light blue violet and a little bit of cobalt blue. You don't need much paint here. There is hardly any of that color at all, but it's pretty important. So this is how much you need. Okay, so there's a little bit of light blue violet and a little bit of cobalt. I'm going to take my palette knife and mix them together. And it's just a hint darker than the light blue violet. And it's really essential that it is. It's it doesn't quite show up as well. So if, it's, if you don't mix that little bit of cobalt in there. So when I'm mixing, I just kind of wipe my palette brush off on a paper towel. OK. Or my palette knife, I'm sorry. My palette knife. So the next color is going to be a key color that you're going to use throughout the time that we paint together. You will always be able to make burnt sienna. And burnt sienna is in many different paintings. You'll find it in portraits easily. And many times you'll find it in portraits. You'll find it in some land landscapes. And it is kind of a reddish brown, which can be mixed from uh, a little bit of blue, yellow, making green. So I'm taking my hooker green and cadmium red, and I'm mixing those together. It makes a beautiful, rich burnt sienna. And, you know, sometimes, depending on how much green you put in there, it will make it either a lighter reddish brown or a deeper, more... Uh, like more like a raw umber brown. But the, the burnt sienna, we're going to use that color today. So um, 
I'd like you to be able to mix it. You can purchase it already mixed, but just to save you from having to buy more paint, you can, you can mix it. The next color we're going to mix is, like it's like a rose color that's in this painting. I've got my light violet, and I'm going to mix a little bit of alizarin crimson, cadmium red. Now, you know, to notice that I put cadmium red in the burnt sienna. And that color is going to kind of show up throughout the painting. The cadmium red is kind of in a lot of parts of this painting, believe it or not. And I know it's a vivid color, but uh, when you mix a little white in there, it's going to be a subtle contribution to the painting. So I'm going to put a little bit of white in this. And you'll see. Oh, I get a big thing of white. I use a lot of it. All right. I think that'll be good. So um, mix that all together. It might be a little bit light. But yeah, this color is in there. This color is definitely in the painting. So. And then you're going to take some of that color. Now, in Impressionism, it's very important to keep your colors pure. So we're taking a little bit of the pink that we just mixed, and we're mixing a little bit of the burnt sienna in it. That's going to make kind of like a, uh, a peachy, sort of deeper color, uh, like a dusty rose. So that's an important color to have. And then lastly, one more color, and that is, uh, it's what creates these shadows. There are some deep, deep shadows up here. We're going to need to add a little bit more green to our burnt sienna. So you take some of the green, just a very little amount. You don't need much at all. It's barely anything, but every little stroke, every little dust of color, it does make a difference. So um, I'm going to mix a little bit of this burnt sienna and the green together, and that'll make a deep, raw umber. Uh, maybe I'll add a little bit of uh, cobalt to that because um, it seems to be a little bit darker than the brown. We don't want brown, not a lot of brown. And the brown, it might take away a little bit. So I'm going to use blue. So I'm going to just mix a little blue in there. And that will make the fifth color that we need to mix. OK? So let's get going with our painting. Now, Monet did not use metallic gold in his painting. But I found it's such a lively color in this painting. It actually glows. So I'm going to start with the gold. I'm going to wet my brush a little bit. Now, when you're painting with acrylics, the water is like a vehicle that the paint rides around the canvas in. If you add more water, then the paint will be more easily driven around the paper. If you add less, then it might be more scratchy or more uh, difficult to push around, but definitely be thicker. OK, so I'm looking at my copy here. And I have a rendering here. And I want you to know you can go on my website, masterartistclass.com, and you can just get into my email there. And you can just send me a quick email. And I will send you a rendering, a copy, 
and a list of supplies that you'll need, okay? So just so you know, you can get one of these and you can do this class with me. All right, so I'm gonna start by putting down the gold. I'm covering the whole sky. And I don't think I'm gonna use much water with that though because but I need to be able to see the rendering underneath the gold. So I'm gonna just put a pretty good amount down. And the gold, it does, it, it does let the rendering show through. So I'm just going to do that. On the rendering, the light parts that you see, the white, that is actually like a deep yellow or goldish yellow. Um, here, got this gold here. I'm going to go along here like this. Oop, got a little bit of red. Uh oh. <laughs> we'll fix it. Anyway, I'm going to rinse my brush. You, it's really important to have a clean paint. Um, you can really make a difference if you don't get all the paint off of your brush. So I really do rinse my brush really well. Okay, so now I'm going to go over, I'm going to put that, go over that like so. I'm going to go like this. I am not being careful at all. This is supposed to be a fun project, so, you know, just enjoy yourself. Use your wrist. You know, hold your brush lightly. And, um, you know, uh, sometimes you'll have to hold the brush more tightly when you have to scrub in color or something like that. For now, let's just hold our brush light and relax. I'm going over the bottom part of the cliff here. And... You know, I think that'll be good. I'm going over that dark gray a little bit with the yellow or the gold. Okay, so there we go. That's how that should look. Ish. You know, I never say it has to look like that, but if it looks like that ish, that's good. Okay. So the next color we're going to use is a this light light pink, and I'm going to get my uh, tapered brush, tapered shadow brush. I'm going to use this light pink here, and we're going to do some of the clouds. So I don't have much water on my brush at all, but you can see I'm just putting a light coat down. You know, I'm just looking at my copy and randomly putting this where it's dark on the rendering. I can see those dark gray spots. I'm going to keep adding the pink. You know, it's, it's either sunset or sunrise. It's low tide. I don't know when low tide usually is. I think it changes. But... Um, it's one of the, either the end or beginning of the day. And I'm just looking at my copy. I'm putting a good amount down. There are other, several other colors that are going to go on top of it, you know. Um, there's some of that color in the water. And I'm going to go along the coast here, the horizon. There's a little of that color. So, just kind of going, I'm holding my brush kind of horizontally and dragging it across. I'm not painting it or pressing it or anything like that. I'm just kind of making a line because these. These uh, water areas down here, they are kind of horizontal. 
and I'm just holding my brush lightly and doing a dab here and there. I'm not really painting it like this or anything. I'm going horizontally, lightly, very lightly. Um, then we've got some of this color over here. So I'm going to just go ahead and paint over that. Painting over the gray, all the little markings there. I'm not trying to be careful at all. It's fine. Now, there's a little of this color also in these cliffs. And I've got my, now I've got my tapered brush pointed up and down vertically. So this is a great brush. You can paint so many different things with it. Um, anyway, so going up and down very gently, holding my brush. I'm not pushing down on it at all or anything like that. And I'm going across here like so. All right. Feeling like we're doing pretty good so far. Now, there are some deeper. I'm going to show you what I've got here on my palette. I have all these colors. They're all mixed from the colors that we talked about earlier. Um, so this color is a little bit deeper. We talked about it. And that is going to be some of the speckles along the shore. So let's do that. I'm going to do this deep rose color. And we're going to, um, I got to switch brushes, I'm sorry. We're going to use the quarter inch flathead brush for this. You can see his brush strokes are, you could almost see every brush stroke that he put down, you know. I know he has layers, but in this area, it's very spotty, and I'm just dabbing. OK, I'm going to dab, 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 like so. I'm going to go along the back here by the water, by the cliffs. Put more of that color back there. So we're doing the middle rose color. Um, it kind of goes like this. I'm using, again, the horizontal movement. And I, I'm not pressing very hard either. OK. Oh. Dab, dab, dab. Dabs and dashes. <laughs> now, mind you, this man Monet was probably standing on the beach with his easel, painting this. You know, he was in the elements. So he was being sort of quick about it. He didn't want to lose the moment. So when people paint quickly, uh, there tends to be quite a lot of uh, emotion. It's a very emotional sort of painting. There, he's in a hurry. And, but you don't get that sense. Um, you get the sense of life and how beautiful this scene is. You do. It's kind of, it feels serene. But when you look at the paint strokes and brush strokes, um, you can see there's quite a lot of life and movement. OK, so now I think there is a little bit of that color in the cliffs, too. So let's do that. We'll do that. On the lower part of the cliffs, there's that deeper rose color, sort of like this. I'm going vertical, OK? All right. Now we're going to start using the burnt sienna. And that is here on the top part of the cliffs. And I'm using my smaller brush. That's OK. There are some trees up here at the top on the cliff. And um, I'm just kind of touching 
my brush up here, dab, 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 just kind of very lightly touching it. And then I'm going horizontally, and then I'm going to go vertically. And it kind of looks like little trees up there, just very faintly in the distance. Now, wherever it's dark gray on the rendering, I'm going to cover it with the raw, burnt sienna. And I'm looking at my cliffs here. I'm looking at them and seeing the shape. A lot of times we have an image in our brain and that says, oh, these are cliffs. They look like this. They look like rocks. Uh, don't pay attention to that. Look at the copy here. Look at the copy. What is it telling you? Is it telling you the cliffs look that way? Really? You know, really, look at the shapes that you see. And then go ahead and, and put it down. So look at the shape, then go back to your painting, check it out, and then go back and look again. I mean, you're not going to make any mistakes here because uh, we're not going to paint it exactly like Monet. And he isn't going to paint it just like us either. I've said that before, but it's true. Nobody can paint like you. You are unique. And um, your rendering, rendition of this painting, I got my tapered brush again. I feel, I feel like I can make better, straighter, more straight lines with this brush. So when I go into the water, that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use my tapered brush. Um, so where I w what I was saying is that nobody can paint like you. When I would go to the retirement and independent living communities, um, one of the really nice things that would happen is that the person that did the painting would be able to share it with their family. And uh, I actually had families fighting over who was going to get that painting, uh, you know, from the grandparent or the mother or something like that. Uh, they were so proud of their work. And, and the thing is, it came from their hand. So they, they were leaving a legacy for their family. And uh, it was lovely. It was really, really lovely to be able to offer that to people. Um, we got some rocks sticking out of the water over here. And We've got people here. We've got, I'm, I'm just, I've got my brush and it's, I'm going to hold it vertically. And I'm just going to set it down here. And there are some vertical lines. Those are people, actually, and they're reflections on the shallow water. That's what that is. Um, pretty cool how he did that, because it really does look like people even though it's just a touch of a brush. Uh, let me step back and look at that. I, I like to step back. So we're getting there. We have some other colors to put in. I'm rinsing my brush again. And I think I'm going to go back with this uh, quarter inch flathead brush. Now uh, I'm going to put some of this violet in the sky. And, oops, not that much. I'm just going to put a little bit. I'm going to take most of the paint off of my brush. I'm going to put some of it, though. That's OK. Look, whatever you do, it's not going to be a big deal. If you put a color that you don't like or something, no big deal. You can cover it up with paint. <laughs> That's the nice thing about these uh, acrylic paints. You can fix a mistake or whatever you like. You know, you can put in whatever you like. I could put an airplane in there, <laughs> or 
anything. I'm just saying that you can't make a mistake. You're going to have a beautiful painting no matter what. We're almost finished here, believe it or not. Um, just stick with it. Don't get frustrated. Be gentle with yourself. Enjoy the colors. Enjoy the thought that this is going to be a very successful painting. No worries. Layers and layers. That's what the Impressionists did. So I'm going to take lots of different colors. I'm going to take some of this bleach titanium, mix it with some of the titanium white. I'm going to mix them and kind of go into my clouds again. Now, clouds are not, uh, they're not, lines. You're not going to find a, an exact straight line in the sky unless it's some kind of a chemtrail or something. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, no, you're not going to find a lot of that. Uh, so I'm just kind of, I've got the paint, hardly any paint on my brush. I'm just kind of swirling it around here lightly over some some of the darker parts. I don't really want that much darkness in the sky. I'm just going to kind of swirl around here. And I'm actually holding the brush a little bit tighter so it doesn't fall out of my hand, but it's, uh, it's helpful to hold on to it a little bit tighter when you're doing this particular step. So, I'm going to take the bleached, unbleached titanium and just kind of go make some more linear kind of advances out into the sky. And we're going to go into the water also. But first things first, let's take the titanium, unbleached titanium and kind of go along like so. So you can see some, I've got my brush kind of horizontally again and just kind of blending out the rigid, any kind of rigid line. All right. Now I'm going to go into the water and I'll use the unbleached titanium and I'll kind of go along here. I'll go a little bit heavier. I'm not going to do the swirly thing because the water has waves and those waves come in ripples. So it's going to be a more horizontal line down here. And you know, this painting is so gorgeous. Uh, it's just a magnificent show of what can happen in nature and in the outdoors. And no wonder, you know, Monet loved it so much outdoors. I mean, what we're so lucky, especially here in the Berkshires. We are just so, so fortunate. I know people that live in the city and... Um, they don't get up here very often. And I mean, it's a different world down there. Uh, and we are just so fortunate. I mean, this is in France, obviously, but here in the Berkshires, we have all kinds of bike paths and things like that. You can do paintings of those, too. You could do your own en plein air uh, painting and really create a masterpiece. Um, you know, a lot of times I would say Monet would do a quick sketch and then he would, uh, 
he would um, go and bring it home, maybe. But I doubt it. Not very often. Only in his later years when he was going blind, I think sometimes it was easier that way for him to focus and create the light that he wanted to share, have. And, um, but for the most part, he was out in the elements. And, you know, I, I'm not really sure what causes cataracts, but that's what he had. And um, I think it's from being outdoors all the time and being out in the sun. And I think that kind of creates cataracts. They say don't look at the sun. And I think that's why. But anyway, wear sunglasses or wear UV protectant <laughs> glasses if you go outside. All right, so we're, we're really coming down to the home stretch here. I'm going to put a little bit of titanium white in the water just to bring a little bit of lightness in there. Again, I've got my brush sideways, holding it, kind of using the end of it. And I'm trying to look at the copy as much as possible. So there's some things going on here on the shore. We're going to do those next. We're going to do those last parts on the shore and we're going to add in the last parts of the cliff. So almost done. I think there's some of this violet, a little bit of this violet here. I'm going to mix it with the rose color and uh, put that in the shore. There's some of that color. So wherever you see a little darkness there, Go ahead and I'm going to put my palette down so I can hold this. Okay. The paper wants to curl away from the canvas. I don't want any of that gray showing through, okay? I really, really want you to just keep building up the paint until there's none showing. I don't want any of that gray showing through. It's just a guiding factor, you know, just something to guide you through this painting. And I'm just dabbing until there's no more gray showing. I don't want any more gray. So keep going here, a little bit more. I'm just mixing it as I go at this point. And it's okay. All of those seascapes, people think turquoise, a little bit of blue, a little bit of green, maybe some white caps. Look at this seascape. There is literally hardly any blue in it. And um, it's fabulous, fabulous. It's just part of nature. All the colors. Okay, um, I'm going to work on this, these cliffs here. So I think I'm going to take a little bit of this uh, blue violet and a little bit of the rose. Mix that all together, and I'm going to go on this part here. Make it a little bit lighter on some of these parts because I think it's reflecting light. And, oh, geez, there it comes. You know, I've got like nine pieces of tape on this thing, and it still wants to curl up. We're almost done, though. Okay, so, yeah. Coming down here, we're almost done. One more color. And we're going to do some of the darker spots, which now I'm going to mix a little bit of this green 
and the burnt sienna that we mixed. I'm going to do it, make it a little bit darker. And then I'm going to take um, the cobalt and mix that in there. A little bit of the cobalt. <laughs> okay, so I want it to be really kind of a deep, rich color. So you could even make it purple if you wanted, like a deep purple. Uh, anyway, here we go. And we're almost done. After this part, we're, we're going to be done. And it is right here. Going horizontally, a little bit over here. There's a deep, deep part of the ocean here. And there's some spots here in the cliffs. And they don't have to be perfect. Just look at them. Do the best you can, like so. There's a little bit of something here and up here. And I think we're done. And we are. I'm happy with mine. I hope you're happy with yours. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to hearing from you. You can send me an email at masterartistclass.com. I'll send you a rendering, a copy, and a list of supplies. And um, I look forward to hearing from you. Have a good day. And so long. Thank you.